thrive better where good governance is the rule, not the exception. Since Nigeria returned to democratic rule in 1999, Nigerians are still in search of purposeful leadership and real development. On the 29th of May, many governors who took the oaths of office this same time will mark their one year in office. Celebration of this nature as elected governor or president is not a new phenomenon in Nigeria, neither is it peculiar to this climb. One must admit that the state or level of governance is not the same across the 36 states of the Federation. The challenges of development in many states in Nigeria cannot be overcome in four years, let alone one year in office. In spite of this, Governor Shei Makide of Oyo State has indeed surprised a lot of people, especially coming from a political party that lost out during previous elections, the People's Democratic Party. We were shocked at some things when we came in, you know, uh, sudden realities, but uh, it didn't take us uh, a long time to adjust to, to those uh, realities. So I would say we've done fairly well. So he rolled out the four-point service agenda of his government, which he said rests on the four pillars of health, education, economic expansion through agriculture and its value chain and lastly security. <laughs> The most important priority of government as investor is indeed education. Armed with this knowledge, Governor McAdee began with the scrapping of 3,000 Naira education levy imposed by the previous administration. To cushion the effects of the fee stoppage on schools, Governor McAdee released about 526 million Naira per term as education grant. This action alone culminated in a rise in school enrollment across the state as many took advantage of the policy. It wasn't that parents took upon the private school, but we have to stay there to give our children good education. Now that this government has improved on education, we are returning them to government on schools. A review of the education budget from 4% to 10% in the 2019 budget followed almost immediately to give attention to the education sector as promised at the time it was seeking the mandate of the people he didn't stop there students across the state all got free text and exercise books in all subjects to aid both the teaching and learning process just as the senior secondary school three students were given compendiums to assist them do well as they sit for the West Africa Examination Council. Of course, we believe that uh, knowledge is power. Myself, as an example, I uh, went to school. Uh, I had free education in Nigeria State during uh, Chibolagi's uh, time. So we know that if you give people exposure, you give them knowledge, and that's why you know we focus on education in terms of uh, the amount of money that we budgeted for education because we know that uh, a sound mind, yeah, in uh, a healthy body, you know, will definitely be productive. This cost this government about uh, 2 billion, 80 million or so, for different of the books to schools in New York State. Uh, we also organize intervention classes uh, for, for students, that, uh, students that are preparing for WIAC, and even organize intervention classes for students that start for JAMP. We also distributed free compendium of past questions to, to students in, uh, say three students, both in public and private schools. The benchmark recommended by the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, UNESCO, for education in the budget is 26%. So what Governor McAdee did was to first move it from the 4%, where he met it in the 2019 budget, to 10%. And in the year 2020 budget, Makide ensured that 22% was allocated to the education sector. On bursary awards, the governor, without wasting time, paid the sum of 500,000 naira as bursary to all your state students in the backlog session of the Nigerian Law School, a feat which has been described as unprecedented. Government gave money to tertiary institutions. Labo Kekla Invest, for example, uh, when we came in, it was in a bit of crisis, and some money were allocated to that school. Five hundred million was allocated to that school uh, to take care of some of the immediate needs. 
Uh, we probably give 200 million to the political burden to ensure accreditation, which they have done now. And in this year's budget, we've been able to sustain payments of 100% subvention to all the federal institutions in our states, and also allocated money for their capital projects, running from 120 million to 300 million, depending on the size of the school. The education sector, under the administration of Governor McIndy, in the last one year has also rebuilt education infrastructure through the State Universal Basic Education Board, SUBEP, and Sustainable Development Goals, SDG offices. There has been massive completion, construction, and rehabilitation of over 300 school buildings across Oyo State through SUBEP and SDG offices. All of these have given a facelift to school infrastructure in Oyo State in just one year in office. We inherited a lot of projects. Some have been abandoned. Some, the contractors have voted away. Some were even at the foundation level. But the day we came in, we encouraged the contractors to come on board. We want them to come and, I mean, to come and finish their job so that they can be paid. Unlike what it used to be to operate in the state before that, when a new government comes like that, you will just sack all the contractors and the award. We didn't do that one. And the fact that we did not do that one paid off for the state in the sense that we were able to make these contractors work and we were able to complete a lot of projects that were supposed to have been abandoned by previous administration. The saying by Mahatma Gandhi is that health is real wealth and not pieces of gold and silver must be worth resonating in the heart and mind of Governor Shea McIndy when he listed health as another major pillar upon which his administration is committed to making accessible to the people of Oyo State. After all, only healthy citizens can be productive. It began with the governor paying an on-the-spot assessment visit to the Ring Road State Hospital, New Adi Oyo in Nevada, shortly after he was sworn in. The visit was an eye-opener. The hospital needed modern equipment to restore it to its former glory. Without wasting time, Makide made outstanding payment for equipment and they were supplied to the hospital. Almost all the major units got new and modern equipment that is expected to make healthcare delivery seamless. Uh, this is one of the imaging modalities uh, that the government supplies and this is called the conventional X-ray machine. This is used in capturing the images, put especially the extremities, the upper limbs, the lower limbs. We can always use it for the skull also. Uh, we can use it for chest x-ray. With state-of-the-art equipment at radiology department, a modern theater, automated laboratory and general facelift deliver at the state hospital at Ring Road, it sure is business unusual. With the governor's visit, the key areas where the hospital had challenges, bad road network, the epileptic electricity supply, shortage of personnel, inadequate medical supplies, especially at the casualty ward, and problem of outdated medical equipment, among others, have actually become history. Adyoyo State Hospital is gradually bouncing back to reckoning. The Jericho Specialist Hospital, located at Jericho, also benefited from one of the unscheduled visits of the working governor. The result was the relocation of the maternal and pediatric hospital, Jericho, to a bigger building that had been constructed but was not in use until now. For those who patronize this family clinic, it is a new dawn. A Royal Maternity Center was also rehabilitated, just as there are ongoing renovations and construction of model primary healthcare centers across the five zones of the state. In collaboration with a non-governmental organization, our Baza organization, the Royal State Government organized a free cataract operation. About 9,737 residents of the state benefited from this as they got free drugs and eyeglasses. Mobility is key in the health sector. The state government procured about 10 well-equipped ambulance vehicles, with three as ICU-capable ambulances. To the Oyo state government, health has to be accessible by all, both in the urban and rural areas. So, the free health mission with the aim of reaching rural areas, touching all local governments in the state, was flagged off at Kishi Town. However, the outbreak of the novel coronavirus halted the free health mission. 
with the outbreak of the virus, the Oyo State government redesigned the maternal and health center at Olodo as the state infectious disease center after it was equipped accordingly with a 100-bed facility with some modern equipment to accommodate patients who have tested positive to the virus. We've um, renovated uh, healthcare facilities, um, general hospitals, and this uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic has also given us the opportunity to uh, put in permanent structures, you know, of our healthcare uh, uh, facilities. I can say that the approach of the Russian government is a little bit different from what other people are perceiving. And I think the reason behind this is because we are the citadel of learning. <laughs> As one of the pillars in which the administration of Shea Makede rests on, the government focuses on this sector, bearing in mind that the state can boast of a vibrant economy when all indices, especially in the agribusiness, is allowed to function adequately. Generally, uh, agriculture has been practiced as more of the culture of agriculture or agri rather than the business of agriculture. So one of the things that is essential is for us to um, move away, paradigm shift from that culture where it is just about subsistence farming to more of the business and the management of agriculture that is referred to as agribusiness. And of course, that's the reason why the name agribusiness comes to place. There is also a strategic partnership with agriculture research institutes with a view to redefining the way agriculture is done in the state. Furthermore, government established the Oil State Investment Promotion Agency, OICPA, which is leading the charge for public-private partnership-driven economic expansion. We could turn around some of these moribund um, um, companies and also um, injected life into the, into the economy. I believe that with this um, off-balance um, sheet um, investment, I mean investment that are not like captured within the budget, these are money of investors that are coming in, not the budgeted expenditures that is being spent by government. So, so apart from the budget that is being run, that is robust, we are also bringing private people with their individual money to come into the economy, and definitely this is really, really helping the economy and people are happy. So much has been invested in the government's drive to use agribusiness to expand the economy of the state. The government has commenced the upgrade of farm settlement into the farm estates under the Ohio State Agribusiness Development Agency. And just recently, the state completed payment of 350 million naira counterpart fund for RAMP and declaration of state credit affected by the World Bank. We want uh, people to come into Ohio State and feel very, very secure. We want them to come in here, sleep with their two eyes closed. The prime duty of the government is to serve and protect the people. With a tight security architecture put in place, government and the people can live in peace. Achieving this necessitated the procurement and distribution of 100 automatic care vehicles for all security agencies in the state in the first 100 days of the Makede administration. State-of-the-art gadgets were also procured as security gadgets as well as communication equipment for the state. Security Code 615, which has helped in bridging communication gap between citizens and government for emergency situations, was also launched. When your Excellency marks your 100 days of office, 100 motorbikes were procured to among other things, breach the security infrastructure gap of the security agency in New York. And in addition to that, without this, um, some other treatment, the vehicles will not be missing. The Excellency has also kindly um, approved that communication targets should be installed in this vehicle, including the upgrading of the communication infrastructure of the Nigeria police in the state to enable us to reach as far as Shaki and the other areas, which 
It is our priority to ensure that both indigenous and settlers living within the boundaries of, of our various states can carry out their legitimate activities in a secure environment. The rising insecurity in Southwest, occasioned by kidnappings and robbery, brought the governors of the Southwest state together to introduce the state security network, codenamed Amotek. Having gone through the necessary procedures required by law, Governor Mike Day, on the 10th of March, signed the Oyo State Security Network Bill, codenamed Amotek Bill, into law. The government also procured 33 pickup vans and over 100 motorcycles for its operators. Amotek has come to say, you don't have to be uh, afraid if you are not uh, uh, having uh, criminal intention, if you are not criminally minded. Other thing is join us together with us, let us uh, have a secure environment. The Light Up Oil State Project with smart LED street lighting system to fight crime and illuminate the state capital is another feat worthy of mention by the Oyo State Government. The state capital with this light up project now wears an added look, one obviously saying there is no hiding place for the weekend. We did the um, light up Oyo Phase 1, which we launched at 100 days. That's done now. And that, I, I mean, Oyo State, you go out at night in Ibado, you'll be proud to live in Ibado. And we just have also given out the contract for light up Oyo Phase 2 which takes the street lights to all parts of your state. And in addition to that, um, apart from lighting up the highways, we also lighting up strategic areas, hospitals, palaces, markets, we are putting street lights there because we have seen the effects of having good illumination on, on the economy and on the security of the state. It's cool, it's cool, it's cool. Oh, it's beautiful. It's Ibado, yeah, and yeah. I'm from Mina, Ninja State. And coming to Ibado is, trust me, wonderful. Like, the streets like make everywhere look beautiful. In Kaya, to go to the by my Asita, at my Kualema, as you go and see me by Kaya, you go to the house. I'm going to go to the house, and I'm going to go to the house, and I'm What got the people to say, what matter of man is this, is a pronouncement that he was donating his four-year salary to the teacher's pension. The pain experienced by workers and pensioners in Oyo State before this administration was unbearable. The coming in of Governor Makide brought an end to the non-prompt payment of pensions for the elderly citizens and the workers. Makide began to pay salaries on the 25th of every month. And on some occasions, when the day falls on a weekend, the workers get their alert before that day. This act, which he has consistently sustained till date, got the workers to christen that day the GSM date. The minimum wage saga was doused by the Makede administration as it brought all stakeholders together to brainstorm. And finally, workers in oil began to enjoy the implementation of a 30,000 Naira minimum wage. <laughs> Not only that, workers now enjoy welfare through the increment of car and housing loans in just one year in office. And then, over hundreds of workers whose appointments were illegally terminated by the immediate past administration were restored. It is no news that the Deputy Governor, one of the cities last year, considered the panel on the dismissal of and the public service. And approved the of some of the other dismissed workers. And the presentation committee and set up. And the letters of resentment for those workers shall be coming back to the service for the very soon. As workers jubilate, the elderly citizens who we all refer to as pensioners are not left out. For many of them, they had lost hope as their pension was not forthcoming and gratuity appeared to be nowhere in sight.
The story changed for many of them who now have health issues resulting from lack of money for medical care. As they praised the Governor Makede administration for releasing over 3 billion naira in one year to offset arrears of gratitude owed since 2012. <laughs> The check was delivered to us. It's very terrible. Life is so hard. Even though we, his children, really reject him because everything is too hard for us. But we bless God now. They have done a lot for us. Flag of the total reconstruction of Maniya Ijaye, Ijaye Road Project. To the glory of God and for the use of the citizenry. The governor, after revoking the 65 kilometer Monier Sei road that had been a pain in the neck of motorists and those who ply this road for years, flagged off the reconstruction of the road now handed over to Kope Construction at a cost of 9.9 .9 billion naira. When completed, it will enhance the social economic status of the state by reducing time and travel time, cost of vehicle operation, and maintenance and indirectly the general competition cost of goods and commuters flying this road. I wish to inform you that one of the capital programs of this administration is to enhance and improve the agricultural sector of this great state. This is why the total reconstruction of this road is paramount to improving the lives of the people living in this country and adding value to the economy of all your state. It was very bad. In fact, we see uh, Mania Junction there to this place. So we spend like uh, 20 to 50 uh, chat minutes before. But now we just go smoothly. And we hope that uh, within a short period of time, it will be even more better than this. So we appreciate the Western government. And we praise God that uh, within a short period of time, we will complete this food for us to be using. And uh, God will deal with them. We almost change our survey every day, even tire, everything. But uh, for now, maybe as they just do it like this, it's even okay. So it's giving more. This road has already caused so many accidents. So, but for now, we are still enjoying it. It's affecting a lot. Sometimes we it did not allow us to go to the farm. It's affecting us. But now it's very okay. So they put the the side road. We hope the road will be okay for us.
Your state is on the track of fulfilling its Operation No Pothole slogan. The list of what the Makindi administration has been able to put in place and is ongoing is long. In just 365 days in office, Governor Shea Makindi has continued to earn the respect of those who elected him into power with the introduction and sustenance of people-friendly policies. Little wonder that his focus, commitment and dedication to the people's welfare and in recognition by the Nigeria Labour Congress and the Trade Union Congress recently. In the coming years, Governor McAdee says he expects to deliver more on his promises, just as he calls for support from the people to be able to achieve it. Well, I want to thank the people of Oyo State uh, so far for their support, for their encouragement, and uh, I want to uh, implore them, you know, uh, to keep up the support, to keep encouraging uh, us. And uh, uh, on our part, uh, we promise them that we'll be transparent, we'll be uh, open, it is their government, and we'll let them know precisely uh, what is going on. GSM, God sends man, Governor Shea McAdee, we wish you and the good people of all your state a happy anniversary.